Have you heard about the GitHub web-based editor for editing repository files? It's a lightweight editing experience completely in your browser that is based off of Visual Studio Code. And it's free. Stick around to learn more. Hey y'all, I'm Mickey Gousset. The new web-based editor from GitHub gives you a lightweight editing experience that runs entirely in your browser. You can use it to navigate files and source code repos from GitHub and to make and commit code changes. And best of all, it's available and free to everyone on github.com. The web-based editor provides many of the benefits of Visual Studio Code, such as search, syntax highlighting, and a source control view. You can even use Settings Sync to sync your own Visual Studio Code settings with the editor. The web editor runs entirely in your browser sandbox, so it doesn't actually clone the repo. Instead, it loads the code using the services APIs directly from your browser. Your work is saved to your browser's local storage until you commit it. A couple of caveats. Because there isn't any associated computing power backing this thing up, you can't build and run your code or use the integrated terminal. And only a subset of extensions can be installed for use. All right, let's go see the web editor in action. So here we are in my repository. Now you're probably used to the couple of ways that you have already for editing what's in this repository. You could clone it down, edit with any editor you'd like to use on your local machine. In the web browser itself, I could click the pencil icon to go into edit mode on a file and I can make changes that way. But now with the introduction of the CodeSpaces web-based editor for your repository, we have a third way, which is actually kind of neat. So we have a couple of different ways to open up the web-based editor. One option is instead of using github.com to access your repository, you change .com to .dev. And by changing .com to .dev, it takes you into the repository and loads it up in a web-based version of Visual Studio Code. If I want to go back to the repository view, I could simply change this back from .dev to .com, and it takes me back to the repository view. Now a second option that I have is to hit the period button on my keyboard. So if I hit the period button on my keyboard, it takes me into the web-based editor. And another way to get back is by using the hamburger menu option here. So I can select that menu option, and this is where I have access to things like file and edit and such. But I also have a go to repository that I can click that will then take me back to the actual repository. So let's make a change and see how we might use the, the editor to do that. So I'm going to go back into the code-based editor by clicking the period button on my keyboard. And this is Visual Studio Code. Now it doesn't have everything, as we mentioned earlier, that, that regular Visual Studio Code would have and that regular code spaces has. For example, I don't have the ability to run the application, I don't have the ability to, to debug the application, and I only have access to a certain subset of the extensions that are available to VS Code. But it's still a pretty nice way to be able to make changes to files in your repository. So right now you can see we're on the main branch. So let's create a new branch. And we'll just call that new branch uh, Mickey slash test1. And yes, I want to switch to the branch. So you'll notice that it reloads the code window and down here we are connected to the Mickey test one branch and if we come back out to the actual repository and do a quick refresh in the repository view then we have our Mickey test one branch 
At this point, I can start making changes. Let's say I want to make a change to my C Sharp app. I can drill down to where I want to make the change. So let's go to Views and Shared and Layout. You'll notice that I get color coding. So it does kind of recognize my languages that I'm using, in this case C Sharp, and I get the color coding. And I even get some IntelliSense. So it's Visual Studio Code allowing me to, to make changes to my application. So we're gonna change this menu item here back to just say, please work. And just to make sure it saves, I'll select file save. And at this point, I would be ready to push this back to my repository. So I can come down here to the source control section I can see there's my change that I've made. I can actually click it and it, I can see the, the um, what it was and what I changed it to, which is kind of nice. And then I can stage this and I can modify menu item, add a commit message. And you'll notice that if I click the checkbox, it's going to um, commit this back to that branch on GitHub. And if we come back over to our repository view, then we can see that Mickey test one just had some recent changes that were pushed. If I switch over to my test one branch and I drill down into my web app, views, shared, layout, then we can see that our change was indeed committed, pushed to this particular branch. At this point, here in the main interface, we could actually create a pull request to, to, to push this change um, to our main branch. However, you'll notice also that one of the plugins that we do have working for us in the web editor is the GitHub pull request and issues plugin. So with the GitHub pull request and issues plugin, I could actually create an issue that I want to tie back to this change. I can create a pull request directly from within inside Visual Studio Code, the web editor here. That's also a plugin that's available to you, your regular Visual Studio Code that you might be running on your machine as well. We're not going to dive into that today. That's going to be another video, but you should be aware that it's there. And of course, if you go to the extensions tab, we can see that I don't have any extensions currently installed. It's giving me a list of some of the extensions that are available. You, um, If you go to, say, do a search for .NET extensions, you'll notice a lot of them are not options because they just are not allowed to run on this web editor version of Visual Studio Code. And also with run and debug, you'll notice that run and debug are not available when we're using the web-based editor for our repository. And then of course we can always just go back to our repository and at this point we could create our pull request and move it through our process. Thanks for watching this video on the GitHub web-based editor. If you liked it, please like the video and leave a comment. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel for more DevOps goodness. Thanks for watching.